Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. All right, so we have a oil pressure issue with our um, 2009 Chevy Suburban. Uh, we actually have a code for the oil pressure sensor range performance. Um, we notice when we start the vehicle, if you look over at the oil pressure gauge, when we start it, it is stuck at zero. Now we know we have oil pressure because we can hear that the lifters are not clanking or um, we know that the top of the engine is getting oil but the gauge is down to zero and like we said we had the code for it. Um, at one point this gauge was reading 80 up. Oh, as you can see it's up to 80 right now. Okay. As you can see the gauge is jumping all around while the engine's running. This is the switch sending a faulty signal to the gauge. So I'm gonna shut the car off right now. I'm just gonna turn the key on. Let's see what the needle does. Okay, so right now it's stuck on 80 with the engine off. Now we know obviously there's not um, that much oil pressure at the sender while the engine's off. Um, so. What we can do now, oh, it just dropped down to zero. But what we could have done, when it's stuck at 80, we could disconnect the sensor, and if it drops to zero, then you know it's definitely the sensor. All right, so we have our hood removed just for the sake of the video, but you don't have to remove the hood to do this. Um, at this point, we're gonna remove, remove this cover. Just lift up, and then just wiggle it forward comes off. Okay, the oil pressure sensor is on the back here. It's really hard to get to. You can struggle to try to get that connector off. What you'd have to do is pull the lock tab up a little bit and then squeeze the lock on the connector and then pull the connector off. And if your oil pressure was stuck at 80 and when you did that it dropped to zero, then that's 100% that would be the oil pressure sensor or oil sender um, that needs to be replaced because it's shorted internally. Um, we are going to disconnect the, we we're going to remove the intake so that we can show it on video a lot better. It's not impossible to do with the intake on, but it is a struggle. Because we're going to be disconnecting the wire to the alternator, we're going to disconnect the battery so we don't arc anything out. So I'm going to take a 10 millimeter wrench and loosen up the negative terminal on the battery. I'll just set that aside. All right, we're going to take this snorkel off. It goes between the air box and the throttle body. Um, what we need to do under here is a little retainer that's holding this coolant upper radiator hose on. So just push that down. You can use a trim tool if you need to. And then over here, there's a little hose that connects this to the upper valve cover. So we'll just pop that off right there. We have these worm clamps, this one right here and this one right here, over on the throttle body side as well. We're gonna take an eight millimeter socket, an extension and a ratchet. You could also use a straight screwdriver. We'll loosen these up, and then same with over here. Loosen that one up. Once those are loose, we can take this right here, push it in like that, and then there's a little grommet right here. You're gonna have to lift up to release that, and then pull straight forward. And twist a little bit and this whole snorkel will come off. Okay, we're gonna disconnect the connector for the throttle body. Sometimes there's a lock on here, a little gray tab that you'd have to pull out. This one doesn't have it. 
So we can just push down on the release and pull the connector off. Next, we're gonna come over here to the alternator and disconnect this connector right here. You're just gonna push down on this lock on the connector, push down like that and then pull it out. And then next we will disconnect this wire right here that goes to the alternator. It should be a 10 millimeter nut. So we'll take that off. Um, make sure you have the battery disconnected at this time. So I'll use a 10 millimeter wrench. This happens to be a ratchet wrench, but you can just use a regular wrench or a socket and a ratchet. Once you loosen it up, you should be able to do it by hand. Pull that nut off, then we can pull the wire out. I'm gonna put the nut back on here so I remember that it goes for the alternator there. And we can move that harness aside so it's out of our way. Next, I'm gonna disconnect this connector. This goes to the map sensor. Just push down on this retainer and pull it out. I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter wrench to take this nut off right here. You can use a socket or a, or a regular wrench. We wanna take these three bolts out here on this cover. This holds the wiring harness down, so I'll use a 10 millimeter ratchet wrench. I'm gonna loosen them all up first and then do it by hand. And I can spin them out by hand and take this cover off. It might be a little easier if you pull it to the side like that. At this point, I'm going to disconnect these fuel injectors on this side. I'm gonna use a pick tool to release the lock first. Come in behind here. Pull the lock up. Once the lock is pulled up, I can take my fingers and just squeeze the tab and pull it up. See, that releases. And we're gonna do that for the rest of these and then we'll do it on the other side. This back one's a little bit tricky. Sometimes you can go to the front of the lock, and push it up just like that. Sometimes that's a little easier. And pull that up. Just push those out of the way. On this side, we're gonna move some of the wires out of our way. Just lift up on this and push it to the side. You can actually, over on the back side, there's a cover. You can get it past the cover. It'll make it easier when we're removing the intake. All right, so this purge valve, we can disconnect the connector right here. Just slide this out and then pull it out, just like that. And then um, the vacuum line that goes back to the gas tank. We push down on the lock and pull the hose straight back and that'll release that. We can leave this purge valve and this hose connected because um, it will come out with the intake. Now we can disconnect these fuel injector connectors. Take my pick. I can pull up on the front of the lock like that. It's a little bit easier. And then pinch, pinch it. Under normal circumstances, what we would do to, per to release the pressure, we would pull the fuel pump relay or the fuel pump fuse, which is number 20 in this. In this vehicle, as you can see, there is no relay there where the fuel pump relay should be, and then the fuse should be right there. So that is actually part of this fuse block. Um, it's internal to it, so there's nothing I can do for that. So we're not gonna purge the, I mean, we're not gonna release the pressure by disconnecting the relay and 
starting the vehicle and letting it drain down. So, but under normal circumstances, that's what we would do. So to release the fuel pressure, um, there normally is a cap right here. There's no cap on this vehicle, it's missing. Um, but for us to disconnect the fuel line, I mean, instead of getting sprayed while we're disconnecting it, we're just gonna release the pressure here. We're just gonna take a rag, stick it over here, and then a screwdriver, and I'm gonna release the pressure just like that. It didn't take much, not that much came out. So we're good to go now. Uh, make sure you wear safety glasses when you do this. You don't wanna get um, sprayed in the eyes with gas. Okay. There's a bunch of different types of fuel dis disconnect tools. Um, this one will work, this one will work. We actually sell a kit similar to this at 1aauto.com. Um, but you're gonna need a fuel disconnect tool, otherwise you will never be able to separate those lines. So the fuel line is right here. There's a little lock right here. You know, lift up on the back side of the lock like that and then pull it forward. like that, just set that aside. So I'll show you how to use both of these disconnect tools. This is the 3 8 size. I'm gonna slide this plastic on like this. I'm gonna pull the line forward first, and then you're gonna push the plastic in, and that releases little fingers in there. And there we go. And you just pull the line off like that. As you can see, there's little fingers in there that release it. And some fuel is gonna spill out. You can put a rag in the back to catch it. I'll just show you how the other tool works. This tool is a little bit easier. Um, you're gonna take the bigger end of the tool and slide this on here and then just push. While you're pushing it with your hand, grab the line and pull back. We are going to remove these eight millimeter bolts that hold the intake on. I'm gonna use an eight millimeter socket, an extension and a ratchet. There's five on each side, so 10 total. So start removing these. Now they're gonna stay with the intake manifold. Um, so you don't have to pull them out completely. I mean, you can if you want to, but um, they will stay with it. Just make sure they're completely loose. In the back here, I switched to a shorter extension so that I can get to the bolts without hitting the firewall here. Now I'll remove the bolts on this side. Just move the wiring harness out of your way. Now, there's these bolts right here for the fuel rail. We're gonna leave those attached because the fuel rail is gonna come up with the intake manifold. Now we're taking the last one out. This vent hose right here is in my way, so I'm just gonna move this. This is for like the PCV system. There's a little lock on this over here. You just push that lock and then pull on the hose up. All right, so now all my intake bolts are loose, disconnected. So I'm uh, just gonna move this wiring harness out of the way a little bit. There's a little shield on the back here. Move that behind there. And pull up on the intake. And because the bolts are in the back, you gotta lift them so that they're past the holes. This one seems like it's sticking a little bit. And if that gives you a lot of trouble, you can pull the bolts out. But Just pull the bolts out like that. So this vacuum hose is connected to the intake right here for the brake booster. So what I'm going to do is just grab and just wiggle it back and forth gently and pull that off. Now we'll 
feed that hose this way. You're gonna angle the intake up like this. Since we got the intake off, um, we don't want any debris or anything to go in these holes, so we can take some rags and just stuff them in the holes. You do want to make sure you remember to remove these when we put it back together. Just put those like that. That'll prevent anything from falling into the engine. The oil sender is back here, or the oil sensor. Um, you can, like we said before, you can replace this while the intake's on. It's just easier to show. Um, it is recommended to do it this way so you can see more. But, um, so we're gonna lift this clip right here. That's the lock that locks the connector down. And we can push down on the terminal lock. Now we'll release the connector. Then they, they make a special socket to replace this sensor. If you don't have one, you can actually use a one and one sixteenth socket, a deep socket, or a 27 millimeter socket will work as well. And then we'll use a ratchet. Once you break it loose, generally it's pretty easy to Take the sensor out by hand. And there's the sensor. Some, some vehicles have an oil screen down here. What you can do is take a, a pick and just slide it down in here and pull up. Sometimes it's hard to get the screen. Pull up and there's the screen. Generally, these will clog up with debris. Um, sometimes it'll give you a false reading. Um, basically, you'll have no oil pressure at the sensor. You put a new sensor in it and it's still not reading pressure because this screen is dirty. So you can either clean it out with some brake parts cleaner or um, replace the screen like we're going to. So this one actually ripped when we pulled it out. So we have a new screen for it. As you can see, this is our old um, pressure sensor and screen. This is our new pressure sensor and screen from 1Auto.com. Um, the screen, if you look at the screens, they're the same design. Everything looks the same on that. And then uh, the sensors themselves, the threads are the same, the, the gasket is the same, the connector is the same. Get yours from 1Auto.com and you'll be ready to rock and roll. Now before we install the sensor, we're going to install the screen. I'm just going to line it up in the hole. Make sure you do it with that screen going down. The top part is open. Like that. Push it down. Push it down with your finger. And then we'll take the sensor, start threading it in. I'm going to start tightening it with the ratchet and then I'll torque it once I get it snug. I'm going to use a 1 and 1 16th socket and this torque wrench. I'm going to torque it to 26 foot-pounds. We sell these torque wrenches at 1Auto.com. It's good and tight. At this point, I can reconnect the electrical connector. I'm going to line this up like that, lock it down, and then I can push down on the lock for the connector. There's a lot of debris in here from mice coming in here and putting nests and stuff, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a vacuum and vacuum out this area. One thing to keep in mind, if you're using an electric vacuum, you don't want to suck up any gasoline.
Okay, and before I put the intake back on, what I want to do is I want to clean the area around where the in intake ports are. I'm going to use a rag and some uh, brake parts cleaner. And just wipe just a little bit around this area. And I'm going to do that to all, all eight of the intake ports. All right, so I cleaned those, all those ports up pretty good. Uh, I'm just gonna take a little bit of compressed air while those rags are still in there and just clean up this area. And before I put the intake on, I'm gonna pull all these out. Make sure nothing went in there. You can take the compressed air and just blow out those holes holes as well. Okay, if you were replacing this intake manifold, the next step, what you would want to do is remove this hose for the EVAP purge solenoid. There's a little lock right here. You push down on that, lift that up, and then you could slide this out or um, take these eight millimeter bolts out of the fuel rail, and then you can pull the fuel rail up wiggle it back and forth, pull the throttle body off. There's 10 millimeter nuts and 10 millimeter bolts. Um, pull the map sensor out. There's a little lock on here, it has to slide. And then pull this PCB tube out. Um, how you get this out is you would have to pull this stud off and then you could twist this tube sideways and then this will pull out. On the back side, you would have to pull this hose off, use some pliers and squeeze that clamp, pull the hose off. And then this cover, there is a 10 millimeter nut right there. And that will come off. And then if we flip it over, these 10 millimeter, these eight millimeter bolts, we'll just pull these out for now. So otherwise they're just gonna fall out. Flip this over and we can replace the gaskets. We're going to uh, replace the gaskets when we reinstall this one. To replace the gasket, there's a little lock right here. I'm going to pull that off right there. A little lock right here and then one on the end. That just holds the gasket. Pull that off. And before I put the new one on, I'm going to take a rag, just wipe down this area. There's a little bit of dirt and debris in there. Um, these little insulation things go right here. These try to keep rodents out, but um, for the most part, um, mice still get in there and stuff. So we'll wipe these down here. And we'll take our new gasket and slide it on that side and then slide, slide it to that lock and that lock, just like that. And we'll do the same for the other side. Now we're gonna reinstall the intake. Um, we wanna make sure you got all the rags out of your ports and everything's nice and clean in that area. Um, we did take all the bolts out of the intake. You can leave them in, but it's a little bit easier to finagle the intake in with the bolt out. So now I'm gonna set this here. I'm going to take this hose and feed it through here. I'm going to go under this wiring harness here. I'm going to angle it in the back. And this wiring harness will come over on this side. It kind of helps to keep the fuel rails on because then you can use the <clears throat> the fuel reels as like handles. You can move it around a little bit. So watch out for the injector connectors, the fuel injector connectors, because you don't want to squish them. That's, that's all lined up like that. And just give it a little shake, make sure it's down all the way. Then we can install the bolts. So the way the bolts work on this, um, you kind of got to angle it a little bit. If you put them in straight, they won't go in. So just angle it so that collar will go down. Just give it a little turn. 
So I'm gonna do this, there's five on this side, and I'll do it with the remaining five on the other side as well. Now I'm gonna start snugging these down a little bit with a eight millimeter socket and an extension just by hand. Just go around the whole intake and just snug them up before we torque them. All right, at this point, we're going to torque these intake bolts in sequence. Um, we start with the middle on the passenger side. We're gonna torque these to 44 inch pounds first, do them all in sequence, and then we're gonna go back and torque them to 89 inch pounds. We'll start with the passenger side, make sure that's good, and then go to the driver's side center and pretty much do it evenly alternating and then you would move to the driver's side the next one back and then the passenger side next one forward from the center and alternating back and forth now I'm going to do the second stage of torquing to 89 inch pounds make sure you're on inch pounds not foot pounds and we'll torque these in sequence, the same sequence we did before. Okay, we'll reinstall this vacuum hose that goes to the brake booster. What we're gonna do is just slide this into the grommet. And over here, we're gonna re-hook up the fuel injectors, the connectors. We're just gonna slide it right back on the fuel injector and then push down on the lock. And we'll do this for the, all the rest of them. And we'll do the same for the passenger side. Just push it down and lock it in. Next, we're gonna hook up this fuel line. Just slide this on right there. Attach it to the fuel rail. We have this retainer that holds the fuel rail on. Just gonna slide this on this way and then lock it down. That'll keep the fuel rail from popping off. Next, we're gonna install this EVAP line. It goes to the purge valve right here. Just slide it on, lock it in. And then we have our connector, electrical connector. Connect that to the purge valve like that. Next we're going to install this wiring harness over here, over here, and then this will slide on right there. This connector will connect to the map sensor. Just line that up, lock it in. This cover is going to go back here, like this, and it's going to go over these uh, wiring harnesses right here. And we'll take these 10 millimeter bolts and put these in, these three. And I'll just tighten them up by hand first. Then I'm gonna use a wrench. I'll use a ratchet wrench. If you don't have a ratchet wrench, you can just use a regular wrench or a socket and a ratchet. And just snug these up. Remember, it's plastic, so don't over tighten it. Just gotta be snug. I'll take the 10 millimeter nut and stick it back on this bracket and snug this up. Now we're gonna reconnect this PCV hose. This goes to the upper valve cover. And just slide that on. We can connect the throttle body connector right there, just lock that in. Then we're gonna take the 12 volt feed to the battery that goes to the alternator. We're gonna pull this nut off the alternator that we put on before, so we didn't lose it. Put this wire on here, and then reinstall the nut. Then we'll take a 10 millimeter wrench and snug this up. Not too tight, just snug. And we'll put the, the boot, the protective boot that goes over that. 
we can connect this connector to the alternator. Just line that up, click it down. Install the snorkel and slide this back here. So we're gonna slide this over the throttle body first. You're gonna hold up on this part of the snorkel because it's gonna go over this little stud over here and then you can push it down on the stud where that rubber grommet is. And we can reconnect this hose. You're just gonna click it in, just like that. Now we can hook this side to the air box. Just slide this on. Underneath here, the upper radiator hose, that just locks into there. Now I'm gonna tighten up this worm clamp with a eight millimeter socket and extension and a ratchet. You can use a straight blade screwdriver as well. Not too tight, just snug. And we'll do the same on the throttle body side. At this point, I'm gonna reconnect the battery. Install the negative terminal. Then I'll use a 10 millimeter ratchet wrench you could use a regular wrench or a socket. And we'll snug this up. Now we can reinstall this cover. We're gonna slide it underneath the heater hoses over here. Slide it back. And then there's two rubber grommets under here. Let's just line up with those studs and push it down. All right, at this point, we already replaced the oil sensor. So we were gonna check it now. We'll just turn the key on. And as you can see, the oil pressure gauge is sitting there at zero, which is good. So now we'll start the vehicle. And as you can see, that the oil pressure gauge is actually reading accurate what the actual oil pressure is. So we repaired the vehicle. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.